Hi, everybody, and thanks for listening to this video presentation. So I plan to discuss a recent thematic that we published on Apple um, on what we expect ahead of its annual September event. This video clip really is only intended to provide some of those high-level insights on our current views. Uh, if you're looking for more of a full in-depth outlook on the subject matter, definitely check out the published thematic research on the subject matter. Um, on Market Scope Advisor, and um, there's also kind of a, a sister thematic report that we had published on as far as it pertains to um, the services outlook ahead and, and kind of the opportunities we see ahead of really three core areas, and that being, um, you know, gaming, advertising, and uh, bundling opportunities. So that, that could be, you know, seen in a, a different thematic as well. Just our uh, dis disclaimer, um, just take a quick read before we move forward. And um, all right, so you know, the much anticipated September event really um, taking place this year on the 7th of September, and it's a week earlier than we actually anticipated and, and probably why Apple was so confident when they provided their September quarter outlook back in July. I think it's also a good sign on the supply side of things in terms um, of the supply chain that they can really launch the iPhone ahead of schedule. So again, assuming a September 7th product unveiling, that would essentially imply um, the orders will start to um, be available. You'd be able to start ordering on September 9th and then September 16th is when um, shipments would actually start and revenue recognition would actually take place. Now, in terms of products, we expect four new iPhones. The only big change to the lineup is, um, is really them ditching the iPhone mini uh, really due to anemic sales that they've had in favor for a larger screen device. And I'll go into that in a minute. Um, you're going to have three Apple Watch devices. This cycle will likely mark the end of the lower price, priced Apple Watch Series 3, while you're likely to see kind of a super high-end watch priced around $800. That'll kind of cater to your more avid athletes out there. Now, headwinds to, we think, to the iPhone 14 cycle, a slowing economy, tough comparisons. As, as well as um, you know, uh, the unfavorable foreign exchange moves, which will likely you know continue to hinder um, the company's revenue over the next couple of quarters. Now, upside potential, if any, we think will likely be, be dictated by higher pricing as well as a more favorable mix shift. And then, you know, I guess finally, on the final bullet point, Max iPad updates will be we think saved for an October November event, which is something they've done here. Um, over the last uh, several years. So as far as kind of, um, you know, what to look for here at the event, pricing really remains the biggest unknown. And, you know, we think the, you know, the, the potential, biggest potential needle, needle driver to consensus estimates. And you can see the iPhone lineup, uh, you know, that, at least that we're projecting for in the table here. And you know, we currently envision that Apple will follow a similar path in terms of pricing its devices to the last cycle. Essentially, the base iPhone 14 will start at $799. In the last cycle, of course, you had the, the mini that started $100 less, but um, it'll scale up, we think, at, at an incremental $100 for each of the kind of the next base starting prices for its other three devices. So you have the max, which would be the, um, the new device here, the, six, the larger 6.7 inch device that would start at um, $899. And then you've got the two pro devices, right? Starting at $999 and then the Max Pro at $1,099. Now, uh, we do see a, a possibility for Apple to actually increase the price of its two higher end pro devices, given the greater upgrade capabilities that these devices offer versus prior generations, coupled with just a natural inflationary environment that would make such a move access, access, acceptable, we think, by consumers out there. Now, you know, I do think that the more challenging macro backdrop right now um, will likely make it um, unlikely that Apple will increase the price of its two standard, or at least increase the price of its standard phone at that $799 uh, base uh, uh, starting price. Now, all in, um, our assumptions, again, call for Apple to keep the status quo with pricing, but, you know, upside potential should it choose to increase prices for its uh, pro devices. Now, you know, the, the pro versions will, um, we think, set themselves further apart from the standard versions here. And, you know, according to a lot of reports out there, Apple 
uh, is looking to make a number of moves here on the pro side of things. First, um, may look to eliminate the notch in front um, for the pro devices in favor of a circular hole punch cutout for the camera. Um, and, you know, that's something that's kind of been rumored here for a while, but, you know, we think finally takes place here in this cycle. The pro devices also expected to come with an upgraded A16 processor. That's essentially kind of their bionic chip that powers the um, their app store, as well as a more powerful 48 megapixel camera that has 8K video recording capabilities. Now this will compare to the more two, the two standard devices that I previously highlighted, the actual 14 and the 14 Max, um, that we think will continue to keep the standard notch intact, but will more importantly use the same A15 chip that was used in the iPhone 13. Not upgrading the processor would be the first time Apple actually does that. And the reason they would do it is to really keep the, the material cost down for these devices. Um, you know, I'd also say with the non-pro devices, they're gonna continue to use the same 12 megapixel camera. So consumers really looking for that big upgrade on the camera front will definitely be more intrigued by the pros in this cycle versus other cycles. So, you know, at the end of the day, we, um, as far as what we expect from all four um, uh, devices, we think all four will definitely come with new color options as well. I believe is a new purple shade, um, along with kind of um, a new modem out there the Qualcomm Snapdragon um, X65 chip. And, um, you know, that, that'll be a nice kind of performance boost across all four devices. It's also believe, widely believed that there's finally going to be a satellite-based emergency feature that will allow users to really send text in emergency situations and report, report accidents um, where there is no cellu cellular co coverage out there. So, you know, this is just a quick update um, on our long-term iPhone outlook. Not much has really changed our thinking, to be honest. We're assuming uh, a zero to 3% growth um, pace for iPhones long-term. Uh, and given kind of the, the long-term negative outlook on the smartphone space, and you know, we're looking down seven to 9% this year alone for iPhones and, uh, um, I'm sorry, for smartphones. And the smartphone industry has really peaked in 2016 and is really well um, below those levels since. But at the end of the day, we do have a modest unit growth outlook for iPhones over the, the long term. And especially after two very strong years, really driven by the shift to 5G and the Huawei issues out there. Um, again, we're being very conservative in our projections, essentially saying no unit growth for iPhones in the cycle, um, as well as kind of um, zero to three percent long term. And a lot of that really kind of dependent on what we're seeing um, on a macro side of things. Now, um, the demand for iPhones long term really going to be driven, in our view, by population growth combined with the wealth effect of just key developing nations like in India out there. And, um, you know, I think also important to note in terms of where we see consumers also shifting um, is really towards kind of higher, um, larger screens that have greater content out there. So that should actually boost the average selling price over time by about three zero three percent and kind of help the 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 growth strategy we think for the company um, really here this is just um, our outlook on iPhone unit projections in the upcoming cycle versus where the consensus is at and really kind of the risk here starts as or you know increases as the cycle extends in um, over the coming quarters so um, we currently think consensus estimates appear too low for the September quarter, and that's reasonable to think um, because um, a lot of times when you think about the iPhone cycle, it is more supply driven up front. They have to kind of stuff the retail channel and what have you. So less dictated about the uh, on the demand outlook and more so on the supply side of things. As you start getting longer in the tooth in the cycle, um, as we kind of go towards the March and June quarters of next year, we think, you know, some of the recent, some of the pull-ins that you'll potentially see here in the September quarter, coupled with, again, the, the tougher macro backdrop and, and comparisons out there, will likely um, cause some issues in terms of iPhone units um, as we go into 2023. But again, um, higher pricing will partly offset, um, or our pricing, our higher pricing outlook will offset a lot of those concerns. Now, you know, this is just kind of um, just our CFRA expected pipeline of hardware products 
Now, um, as we highlighted in September, Apple plans to launch both four new iPhones and three new watches. But as we look past the September event here, uh, we think Apple again will hold an October, November event really to unveil some new iPads, both on the Pro and the iPad 10 side of things, as well as new Mac devices based on their new M2 chips that were announced earlier this year. They'll also on the on the wearable side of things, we think you know you'll see new capabilities on the healthcare and fitness front, which we think will garner great attention and, and adoption from consumers. In 2023, we do see the potential for Apple to expand. Um, into new addressable markets like gaming with a mixed reality headset. That was expected here in 2022, but we think a lot of supply constraints pushed in into 23. Uh, and then longer term opportunities also include AR glasses, as well as an Apple car that could expand both its hardware and its software revenue. So, you know, at the end of the day, when, you know, I think investors need to keep in mind that um, there, any cycle could have its hiccups and disappointments, but when we kind of think about the long-term trajectory on both the hardware side of things as well as the software side of things, there are just absolutely enormous opportunities out there for Apple to continue to grow um, its long-term earnings profile by, we think, um, about 10% on an annual basis here over the next decade. I just kind of want to thank everyone for listening, watching this presentation. And uh, definitely visit our website at advisor.marketscope.com for more information on the thematic tied to this presentation or kind of that sister report uh, that, that I highlighted in terms of uh, the Apple services business or any other uh, uh, report for that matter to get any you know, detailed research about the companies within our broader kind of CFRA coverage universe. And that's all I have. Uh, thank you very much.